Interesting thing happened a couple weeks ago. Am I the only one? Do you know who Aaron Lewis is? I'm gonna guess you probably don't, or if you did, you've forgotten. But you may remember him when I tell you that he was the lead singer of Stained, the new metal band that produced some of the most dreary and unlistenable rock songs of the early 2000s. Anyway, what you may not know is that about a decade ago, his career radically shifted. He went solo and he went country. I still live in the sticks where you wouldn't go And the country boy is all I'll ever be He's only had some very minor success in Nashville and he hasn't really made any impact in many years. At least not until this last month when he released a song about, no joke, how the liberals are destroying America. Am I the only one not brainwashed who thinks of taking all the good we got and turning it back? Well, Todd, that sure sounds like it sucks. But why does that concern you? Shouldn't you be talking about Ed Sheeran or someone instead of this MAGA has been? You're the pop music guy. Don't you usually only talk about big hits? Well, here's the thing. If you've been scanning the Billboard Hot 100 chart, you might have noticed Lewis's name on the list. But you've gone viral. You're number one on Spotify. This song, everybody's sending it to their friends. Everybody's listening. Ha, huh, yeah. A top 20 debut for a song about how the guy from Stained hates the left. And for the record, I'll be using left in an extremely broad sense, so don't hit me with, like, oh, you're not really left if you've gone to a Medicare for All rally less than twice. Spare me, alright? I, I just mean the entire blue half of the spectrum. Because trust me, this guy does not care about the distinctions. Whether you supported Bernie or Biden, you hate America and you're destroying the country, according to Aaron Lewis. So how does this happen? How does a guy no one's heard from in years, performing in a genre he's never had much success in, how does he suddenly chart higher than Megan Thee Stallion in Maroon 5, even for just a week? Well, it's actually a pretty simple explanation. Basically, it's because the song was targeted directly to cranky old conservatives, which is one of the few demographics that still pays money for music. And to be clear, it was all sales. The song has zero radio play, minimal streams. But you've gone viral. You're number one on Spotify. Yeah, that didn't happen. Fox News gets things wrong sometimes. Sorry to break it to you. But it did do really well on iTunes, so maybe that's what he meant. And his label marketed it really well. They started promoting it right before the 4th of July. It went viral with the Fox News Nation. And in a world where everyone can stream music for free, Billboard weighs it very heavily if a song can convince people to spend actual hard-earned money on it. This is how BTS fans have been gaming the system all summer. They can mass buy copies of the song because they're priced so cheap and thus push all those songs to the top, well out of proportion to how many people actually like or are listening to the actual music. There have been arguments about whether this counts as cheating or not. I'm gonna say it's not, because people have been finding chart loopholes forever. And also, I'm not an idiot, and I'm not gonna get the K-pop stands angry at me. So I'm just gonna say that Billboard's metrics just are what they are. According to them, BTS is the most popular artist in the country, and for one week, Aaron Lewis had the 14th most popular song. The week afterward, it promptly vanished and his label is now trying to see if they can get it to catch hold in a more traditional way, but so far it's only barely scraped its way back to the bottom of the charts. So it's only a hit in the extremely technical sense, but it was enough to get it on my radar, so I figured I'd cover it. It's a fascinating case study into modern politics, the mechanics of the music industry, and also, let's be real, it's a nice easy target for a video. Honestly, maybe too easy. If my personal politics are not clear by now, I'll say my position again. In the year 2021, if you think the problem is the libs, you're a stupid asshole. And if you release a song about it and build a whole career and image around it, you're probably the biggest stupidest asshole of all. But you know what? I listen to plenty of stupid assholes. I don't have to agree with everything I listen to. I still sing along with Sweet Home Alabama, even though I don't share its worldview at all. Watergate does not bother me. Personally, I think Watergate would have bothered me a lot. But I gotta remind myself of my job. I review music, not politics. 
Like a little while ago, I was kind of sketching out a possible review of Tom McDonald. Cancel culture runs the world now, the planet went crazy. Lately. He's this white rapper who charts sometimes, and his whole thing is how he hates the SJWs. And I was collecting my thoughts about it and, you know, writing it out. And when I was looking at it, I was like, this is not me reviewing his music. It's me debunking it. I was like, well, this lyric's wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. It was just a list of things that offended me. And quite honestly, that's not a video I would want to watch. It sounds boring and tedious in the exact same way that Tom McDonald is boring and tedious. Trigger warnings used to be on TV for seizures, and now they're everywhere to protect millennials' feelings. His songs are essentially unreviewable because they barely even function as music. It's just a list of things that piss him off, listed off as dully and artlessly as possible. It's preachy. Like, no one uses that word to describe the anti-woke squad, but it is. It's fucking preachy, and goddamn if I'm going to be making the same mistakes as the guy I'm reviewing. So speaking purely as a music reviewer, whatever else I'm going to say about Aaron Lewis, as an artist, he is no Tom McDonald. Because he is an artist and not just a grifting panderer. He still seems to care about making music. And believe it or not, his country career is actually a little better than you might imagine. Plenty of washed up rock stars in the past 20 years have gone country. Some took to it really well. For others, it was just really cynical. It was a transparent marketing move to court an aging audience. But Lewis, I'm gonna say, is sincere. He's very proud of growing up in the sticks, and when people asked him why he switched from metal to country, was it like a marketing thing? He was like, nah, I'm just old. I'm not some angsty kid anymore. I got kids of my own. I'm just not angry enough to make metal. Country feels more where I'm at. I believe that. That sounds right to me. And coming from metal, being an outsider to Music Row, it lets him be more honest and edgier than mainstream country. He's got a song called Northern Redneck, which is him being defensive about his Vermont roots. It ain't all about a southern man. We got outlaws, we got hicks. I'm glad someone said it. Like, I hate how country music acts like country and southern are the same thing. Like, yeah, he's from Vermont, but he's probably more country than some Austin hipster. He also has a song about how he doesn't relate to modern country, smiley smile, party all the time bullshit. It's full of tales of good times and happy endings. My life ain't like that. So I'll keep listening to the old songs. And so yeah, he's one of those I only listen to Johnny Cash kind of country music guys, which, you know. But he's also not some grinning boyfriend country beefcake. Like, there's a place for guys like that. He's got some darkness to him that Nashville generally doesn't have. So I'm willing to give it a shot, even though I already know I'm not going to agree with it. Like, yeah, he hates the entire left, but maybe there's some common ground. I'm part of the left, and just like every good card-carrying member of the left, I also hate the entire left. Seriously, I cannot stand a single fucking one of you. So maybe there will be at least parts I can relate to. Why don't we listen? So lately, I've been wandering. Oh, sorry, that was a different terrible band from the early Bush era. Anyway, go on. Let's hear the actual lyrics. Am I the only one? Okay, let me stop you right there. I, I don't even care what's at the end of that sentence. There's no reason at all to start a sentence with, Am I the only one? Unless you're a stand up about to tell a joke, and even then, that's pushing it. You certainly can't do it while you're trying to be heartbreakingly sincere. Am I the only one? Am I the only one around here because they shit about the rules? Yeah, spoilers, but uh, it's going to be a very Walter from Big Lebowski kind of song. And to answer the guy's question, no, you're not the only one. You already knew that. You've pre-selected an audience you know already agrees with you. Otherwise, you wouldn't say it. But anyway. Is it just me? Am I losing my mind? So, so far it's been very general and self-important. Am I the only one? Is it just me? It's not a great start. But I promise to give it a fair shot. But, and if you ask me, how can you like a song you disagree with? Well, I can feel it if it at least connects to an honest emotion. This am I the only one shit strikes me as very phony. But here's a part I don't think is terrible. Hell, I'll be damned. I think I'm turning into my old man. Yeah, uh, I know a guy who can help you with that. I can help new homeowners not become their parents. But you know, we're all getting older. He seems to at least see the humor in it. I think it's kind of relatable. I also think it's funny, because weren't like all of Stain's hits about his daddy issues? To my father, my <laughs> Look at me. 
I guess I'm just turning into my dad. My dad who I screamed at for three straight albums. Like, that doesn't give you pause at all. Maybe you were right the first time. Just saying. Okay, yeah, at this point the song is not really that bad. It's just aesthetically unimpressive. Like, lyrically, he's puffed up his chest a little and gotten mad in some vague way. Let's get to the real crap. Am I the only one willing to bleed? Or take a bullet for being free? Screaming what the fuck in my TV for telling me? Yeah, you telling me that I'm the only one? Where to even start? Take a bullet for being free. I take a bullet. Why don't we start there? Willing to bleed. Like, let's be clear about where this tough guy act comes from. Aaron Lewis was a sad little kid. He was bullied all his childhood and through his teen years. That's where all those stained songs about depression and misery come from. He wanted to join the military after high school. His dad, who actually had served in the army, talked him out of it. He's given interviews about how much he regrets that. How do you regret not being a lowly army grunt when you're already a platinum selling musician? I'm gonna guess that on some level he still internalized a lot of the bullying and he still feels like a wimp and a coward. And furthermore, I imagine that his new metal success didn't do much for him internally. That it makes him feel like a pampered showbiz sellout with a bunch of whiny songs about his parents. New metal is not cool these days and even when it was big it was kind of a joke. And Stained especially, I remember other bands taking shots directly at them. He even called his metal career selling out in his first country song. Been 12 years since I sold my soul to the devil in LA. It's really transparent. He's rebranded himself as this living off the land mountain man because it just makes him feel cooler. So all this singing about taking a bullet for America, like, let's call it what it is. It's keyboard warrior shit. Like, switch out keyboard for a guitar, I guess, but it's the same principle. It's puffed up shit from an insecure man who's not gonna back it up and knows he won't have to. It's especially funny because I'm pretty sure he's angry at the BLM protests, which actually were people putting themselves in physical danger fighting for their freedom from the government. I said I wanted something honest, and this is the phoniest shit imaginable. Now, him screaming at his TV. Screaming what the fuck in my TV. That I believe. That does sound like it happened. Probably a lot. And I like how he doesn't think, oh, maybe the television is the problem here. But, you know, this guy doesn't think very hard. But let's ignore the lyrics and get to the real point, which is, this sounds like shit. Aaron Lewis has spent much of his new career talking up his redneck bona fides, trying to prove that he deserves to be part of the country music world. I grew up on country music, the new stuff and the classics. And let me tell you right now, this man's a fucking dilettante. I believe he's trying his hardest. I believe he is a country boy. I believe he likes country music. That doesn't make him a country singer. I already pointed out the positives that he brings as an outsider, but it's very clear that he only knows one tiny subgenre of country music, and he can't even emulate that properly. His new metal roots are just too obvious. Like a whole bunch of these metal bands make their country song, and it'll sound country-ish, but it never really sounds right. It's just not what they know how to do. But they're not really trying to be country. Aaron Lewis is. A country boy, it's all I'll ever be. I'm a redneck. I'm a country boy. Yeah, okay. Hide your eyebrow piercings with a camo hat all you want. It's just not you. And if his dismal vocals were a problem in his other country songs, it's deadly here. I can't be. For this song to work, you have to believe that he loves his country. I don't believe a guy who sounds like that loves anything. He's got no warmth to him, no charm. Screaming what the fuck in my TV. It's not the voice of a patriot, that's a gargoyle that eats children. But still, we're not really offensive yet. He just loves America. What's wrong with that? Well, why don't we let him finish his sentence? Come on, Aaron Lewis. Tell us, what made you so angry that you had to scream what the fuck at your TV? Riots? Socialism? Mask mandates? Say it. I'm sure it's something we can have a reasonable discussion about. For my love of the red and white and the blue Burning on the ground Another statue coming down in a town
Well, now we know. Now we know what he's angry about. Statues coming down. Another statue coming down in a town near you. There is no way you don't know this, but those statues coming down are Confederate monuments, erected in the 1930s as a statement against civil rights. That's why people want to take them down now. It's quite possible that Aaron Lewis is too fucking ignorant to know that, but even if that's true, who cares? It's well past time to ignore the heritage, not hate argument. And what heritage, by the way? You're a fucking northern redneck, remember? If you're from fucking Vermont and you're angry about Confederate statue removal, there's really only one plausible reason. I really don't ever say shit this bluntly, but... Uh, yeah, there's never gonna be a better time for it, so here we go. I've had that button the entire time, and I've never used it once. I was saving it for the right occasion, and there's never gonna be anything more clear-cut than this. This shit's fucking racist. Watching the threads of old glory come under. Oh, they're taking down old glory. You're literally crying over statues of men who killed the men who carried old glory. I, I feel like an idiot for even saying that. Like, what a hypocrite. You say you love Americans, but you support traitors. I gotcha! Like, he knows, he doesn't care. Uh, yeah, I don't have to agree with a song to like it, but it sure helps! And blatant racism is a pretty tall hurdle. It's gonna have to be the greatest song ever otherwise. Even if you ignore the racism, it's still just a ridiculous song. Am I the only one not brainwashed who still gives a shit and worries about his kids? Real potty mouth on this guy. Can't take no if you don't like it, there's the fucking door. What is this? You know what this reminds me of, actually? The Team America soundtrack. What would you do if you were asked to give up your dreams for freedom? Just this guy trying to sound sincere and earnest and singing deep down from his soul. Freedom isn't free. No, there's a half to third can fade. And then just some random F-bombs in there to remind you that this is, in fact, comedy. It's a complete and total joke. Who still gives a shit and worries about his kids As they try to undo all the things he did him Kind of an unclear pronoun there. Like, I assume they means the protesters. But when I first heard it, I assumed he was talking about, uh, and worries about his kids as they try to undo all the things he did him. Actually, now that I listen to this again, I think he actually is. He's, he's talking about his kids. His kids trying to undo all the things he did. A lot of arguments breaking out lately at the old Lewis family dinners. Wouldn't that just be poetic? Him fighting with his own kids the way his dad fought with him. And for what it's worth, whoever you're talking about, they're not undoing the things you did because you didn't do shit. Your contribution to this proud country is that you made a lot of mopey songs and you opened for Nickelback in 2004. Is you know this isn't the hands that built America here. I'm holding back my tears for the ones who paid with the lives they gave. God. It's really remarkable how little of the conservative line has changed. Nam era, if you don't love it, leave it. Bush era, don't disrespect the troops. All your classic angry conservative lines, but with all this sentimental acoustic music that doesn't match it. Yeah, I don't buy it. I like America. I'm second generation. My family didn't come here, they fled here. So I think I got a better understanding of America's positives than most. I certainly know it more than Aaron Lewis. So I feel pretty qualified to call bullshit here. This is not a song about loving America. It's a song about hating a certain subsection of Americans. It's just a bitter, ugly, angry song. There's a lot of talk about America in this, but there's no talk about what he actually likes about America. Like, prove me wrong. Show me one lyric that says something nice about America and isn't just shitting on other people. Am I the only one who quits singing along Every time they play a Springsteen song You've got to be fucking kidding me. Well, congratulations Aaron Lewis on being the first conservative in history to know what Born in the USA is actually about. Actually, I don't believe that. I think most conservatives do know what Born in the USA is about and they don't care. They just like Springsteen because Springsteen fucking rocks. So good fucking luck with your anti-Springsteen campaign, Aaron Lewis. 
Like, you're just turning on Springsteen now. Did, did you just find out that Springsteen is a Democrat? Because it's not a secret. It hasn't been for 40 fucking years. Like, it's, it's funny. I'm jumping through hoops to be fair to a song I disagree with politically, and here he is in the actual song just like, Oh, I won't listen to music if I disagree with it politically. I mean, isn't that just the story of the partisan divide? I'm working my ass off to meet this guy halfway, and he's just sitting there being an asshole, refusing to move. So what am I even doing here? You gotta go fuck yourself. Like, yeah, of course you don't like Springsteen. He makes good music, and your entire life is a testament to how much you hate good music. Every time they play a Springsteen song. I mean, that gives the game away, doesn't it? In interviews, he says the song's about how we need to stop being divided. You know, I, I think that we're not talking enough. I think that we're not communicating enough with each other. Together we stand and divided we fall. Yeah. The gall. What if he had just left it vague and blamed the divisiveness on imaginary flag burners? At least it would be consistent. But you cannot make the case that Old Glory is being disrespected by Bruce goddamn Springsteen. The man waves the flag like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. There's not a man on earth prouder of being an American. You cannot actually believe that Springsteen hates America. You just don't like his politics. Like, I think I've been fair here, but the song's just extremely bad. Like, even if, heaven forbid, I agreed with it, I still don't think I'd find the song very satisfying. Like, I didn't like that Toby Keith bullshit either, but I get why people did. Uncle Sam, put your name. America was heading to war, and Toby Keith was out there playing the role, the high-spirited, smug cowboy singing about kicking ass. I brought to you courtesy of the red, white, and blue. I was going to battle, that's who I'd want to imagine myself as. Just like a strutting, arrogant dick who's not bothered by anything. I guess that's a sign of modern conservatism's shrinking self-image. We went from confident, barrel-chested baritone Toby Keith, gonna put a boot in Bin Laden's ass, and now we just have this bitter, shrieking lump of dough who sounds like he's shitting pine cones, screaming profanities at his television. It's more true to life, I guess, but who would want to admit that that's who they actually are? I hated Stained, and you're not gonna get me to say nice things about Stained, but a lot of people did like them. And it's clear that their songs touch something deep and raw for Lewis and for his fans. He said one of the reasons he switched genres is it's rough being on stage, reliving the lowest moments of his life every night. But unfortunately for him, he still comes from the new metal style of songwriting, where you tear yourself open and bleed everywhere. He's got no taste for the pageantry of country music. He just doesn't have the good sense to lie, unlike Toby Keith or Tom McDonald who know exactly what they're selling. So what we've got is something not just distasteful, but also unintentionally revealing. He won't lie to his audience, but he will lie to himself. He thinks of himself as this bold defender of America, but he's way too honest about what he actually is, a bitter middle-aged man who watches too much TV. And he almost manages to hide his beliefs behind vague, pro-America stuff, but he doesn't have the sense to do it completely. He tells you what he's for and against. He's anti-democrat and he's pro-racist statues. So what happens from here? I don't know. There's some news that Lewis's label is trying to get country radio to play this. I'd be really shocked if that happened. My prediction is that Aaron Lewis isn't conservative enough for Nashville. He's too out there. Even if this song was that popular, which it isn't, the powers that be in Music Row don't like change and they don't like rocking the boat. This would just get him a bunch of negative attention they don't want, and plus he's just too off genre. His awful, awful voice would turn off too many people. It's just a depressing fucking song. Like, I can't say I listened to this and it would get my heart pumping red, white, and blue. Quite honestly, I don't think the people who bought this song actually like it. Just like they don't actually like those particular statues. I mean, they may like it in theory, like the ideology, they like having their own thoughts repeated back at them, but I don't think many of them actually enjoy this song as music. I think you have to be a very specific kind of guy who was not new metal but just aged out of it, much like Lewis himself, if you really wanted to enjoy this. I don't think that audience is very big. Yes, Aaron Lewis is going to make some money off of this, but I guarantee you, at the end of next year, conservatives will have given way more money to see Springsteen than they ever will to Aaron Lewis.